one man persuaded over 900 people to move to Guyana, South America, give over their lives and their possessions, and then ultimately convince them to commit a mass suicide. One man was born just like any other kid, but somewhere along the way, he turned himself into a god for his own cult, the People's Temple. Ever since I was little, cults, brainwashing, and the mind of a criminal all fascinated me. Because of that fascination, I'm going to tell you the story of Jim Jones. First, I will give you a little flashback to Jim Jones' childhood, then venture into the underlying works of the cult, and finally close with the horrific death of, of, the, of so many. Jim Jones was born as James Warren Jones on May 13, 1931 in Lynn, Indianapolis. He was born as an only child into a poor family because his father had gotten injured in World War I and he had a lung problem. And so his mom had to pick up a job of a low wage and therefore it left Jones growing up with fairly absent parents. He was a loner in school, yet he had followers, and he desired to be the leader. According to The Cult That Died by George Kleinman and Sherman Butler, Jones was always interested in church and religion. It fascinated him ever since he was little. He, though he never committed himself to one specific religion, he went to church every Sunday. He just changed churches every time. Which, the fascination with religion, led Jones to become the leader of his own cult, the People's Temple. Though Jones strove to front his church as humanitarian and surface focused, many things went on behind the scenes, such as beatings. The planning commission meetings and general church sessions were the platform for Jones' discipline. When he heard that somebody was up against him or that somebody was speaking against what he was saying, Jones would sentence them to a discipline. At the end of the beating, the victim would be forced to say, thank you, Father, Father referring to Jim Jones himself. According to the suicide cult Marsh by Marshall Kildoff and Ron Yavers, kids sentenced to discipline were sent to the church in infirmary and were given electric cattle prod or a heart defibrillator to electrocute them. Uh, because of the beatings and the reported suicide drills that took place after Jones moved his congregation to Guyana, South America, uh, Congressman Leo Ryan, 17 concerned relatives and news reporters con decided to travel all the way to Guyana to confront uh, Jim Jones' accusations about the beatings and the reported suicide drills that he was conducting. When they were there, Jones denied all claims of the beatings and anything else that was happening, and he claimed that uh, everybody that was there was there with their own free will. However, with the visitors there, a few of the members were able to slip notes to them that pleaded for an escape route and pleaded that they could go home with them back to the United States. Jones again denied that that was um, possible or that they would ever do that. But in the end, the 16, according to Jonestown Massacre, Jonestown Massacre by Gina D. Angelis, 16 people chose to leave with um, the crew that had come to confront them. However, before takeoff, a shooting occurred from people from camp that had come to stop everybody from leaving. And um, along with Congressman Leo Ryan and a few of the relatives and the news reporters were shot dead. Back at camp, Jones uh, conducted another suicide drill, except this time it wasn't a drill. He combined cyanide and Valium, which are two chemicals that are, um, cyanide is deathly and Valium is a uh, sedative, um, and mixed it into a Kool-Aid drink. On November 18th, 1978, over 900 people took that drink and died. Now you are able to see how Jim Jones' childhood led to his leadership in the corrupt 
People's Temple, and ultimately to the death and massacre of over 900 people. With a closing note, I think the best advice I can give you is don't drink the Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs>